So next he went to uh, Spain. Spain initially said no, and then he went to Portugal. Portugal said no, sorry, we're already here. We know we can get to Asia. We found an all-water route. So he went back to Spain, and Spain said yes the second time. Isabel, Ferdinand and Isabel uh, gave him his ships, three ships, and men, and they, and they took a cut of whatever he found. He left Spain August 3rd, 1492, and uh, he was on his way. And, uh, you know, the miscalculations, as I said, the Colombian miscalculations, underestimating the size of the world and didn't know that a massive land, land mass was in the way. So if you look at this map right here, North America, Central America, and South America block Columbus's route to Asia. And uh, he doesn't know that. He does land in Hispaniola, in, in the, uh, what's today called the West Indies. He thinks he's in the East Indies, and if you look straight across in, in the uh, blue area, there's some islands off there that are the East Indies, and, and Columbus believes that he's there. He makes a mistake, a massive mistake. And then he spends you know, a lot of time, the next three or four years, looking for the cities in Asia and in, in places like China where he could find this silk and gold and dies in prison for mistreatment of Native Americans. Uh, Columbus's mistreatment of, of Native Americans, we'll talk more about that in class, but he mistreated, le, le, leave it at that right now, he mistreated the Native Americans, and we'll get into to more of that as we go. So that, and when Queen found out about that, they put him in jail and he died a defeated man without ever knowing that he reached the Americas. Okay, so so at this point, you know, you have... Two world powers that are vying for power, right? They each want to have more power. Two Catholic countries at the time, Portugal and Spain. So they ask the Pope to figure out what to do. And the Pope drew an imaginary line. You can see on this map right here. The imaginary line, he had no idea what, what was out there at the time because it's in 1494. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't know. In 1494, Columbus believed that he reached Asia. They don't know the Americas are there. So the Pope draws, draws that line. And the line is, is the dotted line you could see right there. And he said that Spain gets all land east of that. Excuse me. All land west of the line. And Portugal gets all land east of the line. Well, if you look at the land east of the line at the time, it was all it discovered. The land west of the line wasn't. So Spain is going to benefit from the Treaty of Torosius that the Pope drew, the imaginary line. And uh, they're going to send explorers. And what happens is they send all their explorers west. Portugal sends all their explorers to the east. And there you have it. The Americas are going to be discovered by the Spanish, and they're going to dominate history for the next 100 years. And Portugal is going to drop off the face of the earth as a world power. It was Amerigo Vespucci who uh, was the one who found out that Columbus didn't reach Asia. He sailed around uh, some of the places where Columbus was originally, and he said, man, Columbus did not find Asia. This is new territory. But, of course, you could see the red here, the, the, not the dotted red, but the, the red line there. You could see where Amerigo Vespucci is searching around, and that's the area that he searched. He doesn't know how high above, how far north. North America goes, or how far south South America goes. Really limited in their knowledge of what's out there. But they do know one thing, that there's a piece of land there that blocked Columbus from getting to Asia. And they're going to they gotta try to figure it out from there. So America Vespucci, giving credit for that. That's why America is called America. And it was Balboa who ventured across the uh, Isthmus of Panama, how lucky was that? Balboa picked the closest distance between the Atlantic and the Pacific to walk across. He did, and he found the South Sea. So putting two and two together, I'll go back to this map right here. They, what they know now is that there's a landmass that blocks their way. They don't know how big the landmass is, but they found the ocean on the other side. And they're assuming that somewhere around there is going to be some kind of passage through to get to the South Sea that Balboa had discovered. So starting to put two and two together about what's out there. Ferdinand Magellan, let's talk about this Portuguese explorer, uh, sailing for the Spanish uh, because he wanted to go west. He wanted to complete 
the journey of Christopher Columbus. All right, that's what Magellan wanted to do. Complete the, the journey of Christopher Columbus. He wanted to sail west to get to the east. Uh, Portugal uh, didn't want to finance this journey, uh, but Spain did. They gave him five ships, 250 men, and said, go for it. This map tells a lot. Tells you a lot. You can see uh, here the, I guess it's purple, Magellan leaving Spain and venturing out. And you can see he goes south of where Amerigo Vespucci went, and he's looking, going in and out of each bay, looking for a passage or a strait or a river that goes all the way through, never finds it until he gets all the way to the bottom, to what today is called the Strait of Magellan. He loses a ship before that to mutiny. They can't believe how long it was taken. He loses a ship in the strait to sheep, shipwreck, and then he comes out in the Pacific Ocean. It was called the South Sea at the time. It's what Balboa discovered, and it was calm as opposed to the the awful conditions in the strait, which took him almost a month to get through. The weather was so bad, rocky, nasty weather. Once he gets to the Pacific Ocean or South Sea, he named it Pacific Ocean, which is peaceful. And then he, he said, any day now we're going to find Asia. And those of you who know a lot about geography know that it's not going to be any day. It's going to take him a really, really long time. So he kept sailing and sailing and sailing. One ship, another ship turned around. So now he's down to two ships that are left. He finally did get on, uh, find an island where he could resupply. Um, they then, Columbus and his men then uh, hooked up with a, a tribe in the Philippines and fought with them. Probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, the other tribes didn't like like that. Anyways, Magellan was killed, uh, and but his ship, one ship led by Juan del Cano and a small number of men did make it back. They circumnavigated the world. They became the first ever to circumnavigate or go all the way around the world. Some of the contributions of the Magellan voyage, even though he didn't make this all the way, he died beforehand, proved that the world was round. They know that 100% now. Proved there was no passage through South America. Prove the vast, vastness of the Pacific Ocean, prove the vastness of the planet, and gave map makers a better idea of the landscape. So a lot of contributions. One of the most important voyages in American history, of all of history, world history, was Magellan's voyage. That looks pretty peaceful right there. There's a Strait of Magellan. It wasn't so peaceful when Magellan went through. Talk about Juan Ponce de Leon, some of these conquistadors that now are they're Spanish or they're sailing for Spain, and they're looking for you know, gold or a way through to get to the gold, a way through the continent to get to the gold. One of the guys given credit for discovering uh, territory was Juan Ponce de Leon. He was looking for the Fountain of Youth. Obviously, it doesn't exist, or else I would have drank from the Fountain of Youth. And anybody who's seen me and all my missing hair and white hair, I never found it. But he did discover Florida. So Ponce de Leon, give him credit for that. Francisco Coronado. Uh, just uh, went exploring, looking for what they called the seven cities of Cibola, which, once again, conquistadors looking for gold. Uh, and he's exploring in that territory. So he becomes the first to see the Colorado River. Uh, Hernando de Soto uh, was, was the first European to see the Mississippi River, also looking for gold. These are conquistadors, and they want gold and power, and they want to bring back glory to their country, to Spain. Hernando Cortez uh, captured the leader of the Aztecs, Montezuma. He heard stories about how amazing Tenochtitlan was and the Aztecs and all the gold that they could find there. So he was uh, trying to go after, go after that gold, and he did find it, and it's going to lead to the demise of the Aztec Empire. Uh, the Aztecs are going to die of the diseases that are brought over, as many of the Indians are. We'll go over that more in class. But Cortez uh, defeats the, the uh, Aztecs. They kill Montezuma. They take all the gold, and they knock down the capital at Tenochtitlan. Later on, the capital is rebuilt. It's Mexico City in the same area. So the demise of the, of the Aztecs. It was Francisco Pizarro who heard about uh, the conquest of the Aztecs, and he heard about another tribe, so he said it, they must be there, and sure enough, it was the Incas and their leader, Atahualpa, captured by the Spanish, and they took all their gold, and it led to the demise of the, of the tribe as well, as they died for many of the European diseases that they had no immunity to. Uh, let's get into a little bit, and for the first time here, 
uh, English settlement. I mean, this is going to be the basis of this class because they are going to settle in, in America. The, the English are. So the first English Englishman, he wasn't even English, but he was sailing for the English, John Cabot. He was uh, Italian. He's given permission by the English king to go over and look for the cities of Asia so they can go get gold. The year was 1497, and remember, it wasn't until 1501 when they found out that that's not Asia over there, that's a new, new territory. So he's looking for something that's not there, the cities, the rich cities of China. And he gets lost at sea. So the first venture by, by the English ended in uh, tragedy as John Cabot got lost at sea. Frenchmen that went out and sailed will be getting into the French in the next chapter, but they're looking for the Northwest Passage. It's, it's a guy by the name of uh, Giovanni de Verrazzano. Uh, he's going out 1524, so if you, you're putting things together here, you know that in 1501 they found out that it's new territory, so in 1524 they definitely knew that this was new territory. And uh, so Verrazano is looking for some way up in the north to get through. They know that you can't get through in the middle. Uh, they know that Magellan didn't find anything in the south, so why not try the north? He's going through, going in, up every... A river that he could looking for a passage through the continent a, co a passage that we know is not there he became the first European to see New York Harbor which is very very important Jacques Cartier you can see here um, his couple different voyages he's also looking for he's sailing for the French and also looking for the Northwest Passage he thinks that he found it the St. Lawrence River he goes up the St. Lawrence River eventually gets to Quebec what he does is he lays groundwork for French Empire in Canada. Uh, he's going to be the first to see Quebec, and he's going to later on there, you know, about 70 years or so later, they're going to act on, on that, and they're finally going to set up a colony there, but he's the first to lay claim to that. Obviously, he didn't find any Northwest Passage because it doesn't exist. Okay, so that's the end of, uh, of Chapter 1. Thank you, and uh, I'll, we'll go on to Chapter 2.